Morning world, it's about 6.55 in the morning, uh, San Francisco time. Yours truly is still in San Francisco where I've been seeing friends and seeing clients and I've been having a fascinating time here. I've really, really enjoyed this, my stay in this city so far. To my pleasure, to my pleasure. It's, it's uh, vastly different to what I expected. Um, I'm still, I've still got slots. I've got a couple of slots left on Friday and I've got plenty of spaces left on Saturday and Sunday before I jump on the big bird back to the UK. So if you're in the San Francisco area and you want a reading with me on Saturday or Sunday, just drop me a line. Um, Steve at stevejudd.com. Now, I thought, seeing as I was here, and I will be doing another video on San Francisco before I leave to say thank you to certain people, but... Um, I thought while I was here, I'd have a look at the horoscope of San Francisco. The, the signatures on the document that incorporated San Francisco into being a city, the earliest incorporation of the city was on the 15th of April, 1850. Previously, San Francisco was known as the Pueblo of Yerba Buena. Um, but the designated county seat was uh, came to being around the fifteenth of April, nineteen fifteenth of February, eighteenth of February, nineteen fifty, eighteen fifty even, and uh, two months after the city was incorporated on the fifteenth of April, eighteen fifty. Now, obviously, at that time there is no known time for this, but I've constructed a midday chart. And um, this, if, if the signature was happening on the incorporation document sometime between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m., which is a reasonable chance, then the city of San Francisco has Leo rising. The alternatives are that if, if it was incorporated between 9 a.m. and 11, 11.30 a.m., then San Francisco is cancer rising, which might fit because it's close to the coast and it's got a big bay area, but... I kind of don't see San Francisco as a cancer rising city. It's a bit too flamboyant for that. And if it was if it was incorporated after say 1.32 p.m. but before 5 p.m. then it's going to have Virgo rising, which again see the number of homeless on the streets and the kind of higgledy piggledy nature of the different neighborhoods and the transport systems I just don't see it as having Virgo rising so I'm, I'm got the mind that San Francisco has Aries rising so its horoscope will be an Aries with um, Gemini moon and Leo rising Leo on the ascendant but regardless of the time of birth the city of San Francisco's horoscope has one overpowering factor San Francisco came into being as a city at the time of the last conjunction of Uranus and Pluto and this was conjunct San Francisco Sun in a midday horoscope for the 15th of April 1850 in San Francisco the Sun is at 25 degrees of Aries Uranus is at 26 degrees of Aries and Pluto is at 28 degrees of Aries. So the Sun is conjunct Uranus very strongly and also Pluto quite strongly. Now, on the one hand, the Sun-Uranus conjunction, that really works. San Francisco, some clients took me the other day, some friends took me the other day through High Ashbury, the, 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 the area which was the root of the hippie revolution in 1966 and 1967. It is where Ken Kesey and the Merry Pranksters were operating, where the Grateful Dead were operating, and where Jefferson Aeroplane came from. And these are iconic names to those of a, of a certain age, such as myself. Um, so it's, it's wonderful seeing these places of history from, from, of the alternative culture. And with the Sun conjunct Uranus, it's very fitting that uh, the city of San Francisco should be the birthplace in many ways of the counter-revolution of the 60s, along with New York and one or two other places, London. But really, San Francisco was the place to be in 1966-1967. 
But also the Sun is conjunct Pluto and Uranus is conjunct Pluto. And there is a dark underbelly to this city. Most commonly recognized and known by the island of Alcatraz. Having now seen Alcatraz with my own eyes, you know, to a, to a young, a youngish English boy from a country in, 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 the, in, this, in England who now lives in London, the idea of Alcatraz has always been a kind of romantic thing of, oh, the island where people were incarcerated for life and a couple of people got away. And then you see the reality of it and you think, oh God, that's awful. When you, I've, I've looked at the island now in close up and it's only two or three hundred yards from the city of San Francisco, but the currents are so strong that very few people have swum it. It has been swum. In fact, there's competitions now to swim around it. But it has been swum, but it would have been very... The, the tides there that lead out to the Golden Gate are so strong, that very few people would have made it. And of course, there's sharks. And San Francisco... Uh, Alcatraz is a hellhole, or was a hellhole. The people who were imprisoned there, some of the ways in which they were punished were so barbaric and extreme, really extreme. In the worst punishment cells, they were just sleeping on raw concrete uh, with one blanket, no, no mattress, no bedding, just concrete and one blanket, minimal, minimal food, no facilities for washing or toilet, nothing. And death by cop was a regular feature, or death by guard was a regular feature there. So yes, there is this dark underbelly to San Francisco. You can also see it in the large numbers of homeless in the city, even though there appear to be a number of welfare programs as well. But San Francisco also has the moon in Gemini, square Neptune in Pisces. So this would explain the kind of more aesthetic, quasi-spiritual, hippy-dippy attitude that the reputation of San Francisco has built up over the last 50 years. With the moon, moon in Gemini square Neptune, there's always going to be a variety of different attitudes towards belief, religion, philosophy, dogma, theology. And it makes for an eclectic place where it's a kind of pick and mix city where there's, there's, there's 800,000 different people and 800,000 different belief systems. It's not actually that big a city with 800,000 people, Mind you, bearing in mind that I live in London that has 14 million, 15 million. It's what I've found over the decades is that by looking at the horoscopes of cities and countries, you can't really gauge transits and progressions to cities and countries charts as you can with humans. If you were able to, then the, the second Uranus return of, of San Francisco a couple of years ago would have yielded massive changes. And sure, with the advent of Silicon Valley and the wonderful stru structures but are now uh, coming up in the city centre. You can see that San Francisco is on the cutting edge of global innovation. The only place I've seen that's like San Francisco in terms of design is Singapore. And of course, it's always going to have a global attraction to people. It's a very large oriental population here. But it does have this dark underbelly with the sun conjunct Pluto. So it's innovative, original, futuristic, Uranian. Very open to all types of alternatives. But it's also got this subversive, subversive, yeah, this subversive element, the dark underbelly of the homeless, of Alcatraz, and of various nefarious business dealings and criminal dealings in its documented past that make it more than just a place of love and light. But it's a wonderful city and it's been a great host to me. So I think I owe a big vote of thanks to the people of San Francisco, some of whom I will mention soon. Catch you later world. Bye.